What's up, future respiratory therapist? In this video, we're gonna be talking about respiratory rate. That's right, we're going back to the basics, the foundation for which everything else builds us off of. But before we do that, hey, why don't we take a sneak peek of the shift, the very first ever respiratory care reality show premiering right here on the Respiratory Coach YouTube channel on October 19th. Check it out. My name is Danny May. Hi, my name is Kevin. My name is Eric. Hi, my name is Sarah. My name is Devin. My name is Brandon Basak. Code blue, I see you. We got Snoop COPD. 30 seconds just to bail I quit. If you're the smartest person in the room, find a different room. Alrighty, back to business here. This video is all about respiratory rate. Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, respiratory rate's the topic. Before we dissect respiratory rate, do me a favor, head over to respiratorycoach.com, check out the TMC and the CSE boot camps right there waiting to aid and assist you in passing those credentialing exams on the first attempt. I would greatly appreciate it if you would check that out. Now, let's talk about respiratory rate. Here we go. Respiratory rate is one of the four basic vital signs. So we know we have heart rate, temperature, blood pressure, and respiratory rate. The fifth vital sign being pain, and then SpO2 falls in there somewhere, but we know that respiratory rate is one of the four basic vital signs that is discussed. We know that because Egan's talks about it right here on page 3, 322. This is chapter 16 in the 13th edition of Egan's Fundamentals of Respiratory Care. Um, you can learn all about it right here. I'm going to be coming back to this in just a second. But to start off with, let's just define what is respiratory rate. And respiratory rate is defined by how many times per minute a patient takes a breath. Now, that kind of gets tricky, right? Because you're like, okay, well, what defines a breath? A breath is a complete inhalation followed by an exhalation. That would be one breath. Now, what we can do is we can count how many breaths a patient takes in a minute. And that number that you will get, that is your respiratory rate. Now, respiratory rate is very, 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 very important because respiratory rate is the first compensatory mechanism in the presence of respiratory abnormalities, respiratory impairments, uh, VQ changes, uh, anything like that. The respiratory system, anytime there's a problem with the lungs, the first thing that's gonna change is the respiratory rate. And I know what you're thinking is like, well, why wouldn't it be the SpO2? Well, you think about it, how many patients have you ever seen that show a low SpO2 that are breathing normal with a normal respiratory rate. Not that many, right? Because by the time the hypoxemia is detectable by the pulse oximetry, the body has already begun to compensate. So there has already been a rise in the respiratory rate. So the total number of breaths taking in a minute defines respiratory rate. Is it extremely important to count this accurately? so that we can track and trend our patient's respiratory rate because truth be known, when done correctly, we will identify red flags in our patient's care plan prior to the emergency actually, actually happening. So respiratory rate's extremely important. I'll also add in here right now that respiratory rate is also the one that I see documented incorrectly. Or, let me say, let me rephrase that. The one that I see uh, taking the least amount of time or care to actually document correctly. So you see where uh, the patient's respiratory rate all night long has been 16. And then we come in in the morning times to take a respiratory rate or maybe all day and then I come in at night. It doesn't matter when I come in, but we come in and we find them breathing 32 times a minute. And it's like, wait a second, that, that can't be correct because they've been 16 all night. Well, no, the problem is, is that we sometimes get complacent and we learn to just look at the patient and go, ah, 16, 16, 16. We don't actually take time to, to, to count it. When 
it's actually very, very challenging to notice a difference between 16 and 18 breaths per minute. You can't just eyeball this stuff. A lot of us think we can, but we can't. You have to actually count it. So how do we count a respiratory rate? Well, to do that, we are going to watch our patient breathe for 60 seconds. You want a most accurate respiratory rate you can get, then you count it for 60 seconds. Now, I know somebody down in the comments is going to go, yeah, I don't have time for that. And that's fine. But that's the correct way to do it. Now, when you do that, you're going to start your watch. You're watching the patient. And you say, well, how do I know when they're breathing? You're looking for abdominal and chest wall movement. So you'll see something like this. If I turn to the side here, you see my chest wall moving. You see my chest wall expanding as I take that breath. And you can also see my abdominal cavity moves out on inspiration and falls back in on exhalation. So we can use our visual sight to count in out that's one and we just track it for 60 seconds now here's a tip i always start my second hand on the minute because i don't want to get i don't want to forget where did i start my second hand so my practice is every single time start it on the minute and i count for 60 seconds when that clock goes around one minute how what what number did i get to 22 then that's the respiratory rate 21 that's the respiratory rate Okay, now, there are ways you can do this without taking a full minute. For example, if you were to count somebody's breaths over the course of 30 seconds, then you would then just have to multiply it times two because there are 30 seconds in a minute. Sorry, there are two 30 seconds in a minute. So if you only count for 30 seconds, you got to multiply times two. If you count for 15 seconds, then you now have to count or multiply by four. <laughs> if for whatever reason you're going to count for 10 seconds, then you would have to multiply that number by six to get the respiratory rate that is occurring over 60 seconds. So you can't count somebody's respiratory rate for 30 seconds and you get 12 and you say, oh, their respiratory rate is 12. No, their respiratory rate is actually 24 because if they did 12 in 30 seconds, then likely another 12 in the next 30 seconds. Now, here's the problem with cutting it short. The shorter time you take to count the respiratory rate, the more inaccurate your number is going to become because you're going to capture less breaths. Somebody breathing normally, this may work just fine. But oftentimes we're dealing with patients with irregular breathing patterns. And therein lies the problem. When you have patients with irregular breathing patterns where they're breathing quicker and deeper and then they slow down and they have periods of apnea, well, if you don't capture that in your 15 second, 10 second, 20 second time period, then you're gonna have an inaccurate number. So that is the importance of, especially while you're learning to, you, to your students out there that, that are just trying to get a grasp on all this, build good habits from the get go and, 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 and count your respiratory rates for 60 seconds to account for those irregular breathing patterns. So let's, let's, let's practice this. So I'm gonna put a video up and it's gonna be a short video. It's only a 10 second video, but I want you to notice how many breaths are taken. If you have to repeat the video and watch it again, do that. We're gonna put the video up and count how many breaths you observe. Alrighty, so you should have had a number somewhere between five to six. There's an exhalation happening at the very beginning of the video, but you should have captured at least five full breaths, and that was a 10 second clip. So that uh, person in that video was breathing 30 times a minute. You say, well, how'd you get 30 breaths, Joe? We counted five in a 10 second cycle. So. 10 goes into 60 six times. So you had to do five times six gives you 30 breaths per minute. Now, what is normal? That's the question. It's like, okay, so she hasn't elevated or is that normal or what does that tell us? Well, what we know is that a normal respiratory rate 
is 12 to 18 breaths per minute. BPM, breaths per minute. It says it right here in Egan's, again, page 322. The normal resting adult respiratory rate is 12 to 18 breaths per minute. But key words there was this was resting adult. A lot of times our patients in with pulmonary disorders and impairments, they're not breathing normally. So for us, we have to be able to use the correct medical terms to describe somebody who's breathing faster than normal or slower than normal. So if it is greater than 20, that is what we call tachypnea. Just like we talk about an elevated heart rate is tachycardia. An elevated respiratory rate greater than 20 is tachypnea. Now, when we go less than 10, that is what we call bradypnea. So we have tachypnea on the high side. We have bradypnea less than 10. All kinds of things can cause tachypnea and bradypnea. On the tachypnea side, things that make pe pe people, patients breathe faster, we're talking about things like hypoxemia, pain, exercise, anxiety, fear, all of those things and many more. Now when we think about bradypnea, we find that there are things that can cause our patients to breathe slower. Egan's outlines those um, also on page uh, three. 22, and that is when, again, it's less than 10 breaths per minute, traumatic brain injury, severe myocardial infarction, hypothermia, anesthetics, uh, narcotics, and recreational drug overdose. All of those things might suppress the respiratory drive or decrease the neural drive to breathe, and we'll find that our patients will breathe less than 10 times a minute. Now, if you think like I think, then I'm going, okay, 12 to 18, got it. That's normal greater than 20 to kipnia. So what's 19? I don't know. What's 11? I don't know. It, it just is what it is. Greater than 20 to kipnia, greater than 10, bradypnia, 12 to 18, normal. That's your respiratory rate. Now, you want to get good at counting respiratory rate? Because there's the most fun thing about this. And this is what makes a respiratory therapist a respiratory therapist. Not really, but we do weird stuff because we have training that not everybody has. And so I find myself counting respiratory rates standing in the line at the grocery store. I just sit there and just watch the people in front of me and I just watch, they're usually looking at their back but I can see their, their, their scapulas moving up and outward. I just watch them, just count their respiratory rate. If you're a student and you're learning this stuff, it's so easy to practice anywhere you are. Sitting in the living room with your family, watch them, watch your kids, count your kids' respiratory rate without them knowing it. And that's the most important part of assessing respiratory rate. The person that you are assessing should not know that you are counting their respiratory rate because if they know, then they're not gonna breathe normal. So this is something that is done kind of incognito. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm gonna, in your mind, you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assess their respiratory rate, but you can't tell them to breathe normal. Keep breathing like you're breathing. Uh, because as soon as you tell them that, they're going to start thinking about how they're breathing and it's going to change their pattern. And so you have to do it without them not knowing. This can easily be done. Just act like you're counting, you're, you're taking their pulse. You're checking, you're doing their, their um, checking their pulse rate. And instead, you're actually watching their chest rise and fall and you're counting their respiratory rate. A couple of tips there on how to get better at it and also how to do it without your patients knowing it. Because um, if you tell them, then you just messed up the whole uh, gang. So that is a uh, respiratory rate. It's an extremely important vital sign. Don't sleep on it. Rather be the expert on it and get really good at being able to assess it and understanding what it's telling you about your patients. Hey, I'm respiratory coach. Stay right here on YouTube with me. Hit the subscribe button, the like, leave me a comment. Tell me about how you use respiratory rate. Uh, tell me common practices you see with respiratory rate in your facility. All the socials, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, and then don't forget about the website respiratorycoach.com to check out the TMC and the CSE boot camps, your tools to assist you in passing the TMC and the CSE exams on the first attempt. Remember, average is easy. Don't be it.